स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया हेलो ऑल वेलकम बैक टू द कोर्स ऑन प्रिसिशन ऑनकोलॉजी दिस क्लास वी विल बी वर्किंग वी विल बी लर्निंग अबाउट रोल ऑफ ड्रग डिस्कवरी इन प्रिसिशन ऑनकोलॉजी लास्ट टाइम वी हैव गॉट इन टू द इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ प्रिसिशन ऑनकोलॉजी हाउ एग्जैक्टली इट हैज टेकन अ शेप टूडे वी नो वी स्टडीड अबाउट फ्यू मॉडल्स अबाउट फील्ड कैरेक्टर कैंसराइजेशन और कैंसराइजेशन और कैंसराइजेशन ऑफ द फील्ड वी गॉट इंट्रोड्यूस टू डिफरेंट टर्म्स वाई एग्जैक्टली प्रिसिशन ऑनकोलॉजी इज very important for cancer biology we have studied about certain cases about your squamous in uh, carcinoma and then uh, we went on to study about the companion diagnostics which are playing a very very uh, key role in uh, cancer biology and then uh, we have really know what exactly how can you be precise uh, for cancer diagnostics and how can you be precise with your cancer treatment so we really understood if you recollect we understood with that uh, stick diag diagram that how a uh, precision oncology should be both precise and accurate uh, for uh, giving a very good uh, uh, deliverable in terms of a better targeted therapy or a uh, better uh, diagnostic marker now uh, in for moving forward we haven't explored the role of what are the current drugs what are the exact current clinical trials and you have to process of what what is called drug discovery so what exactly is drug discovery how does this process uh, uh, how, how is it is a very much mal why do you need the drug discovery process so now first drug discovery started from ancient methods like for example you were having curcumin or you have even your neem extract many years and in the as drugs now but our your papaya extracts which were uh, reported to uh, lower the uh, cell uh, cell counts uh, wbc counting during uh, leukemia so now uh, how do you uh, really uh, how do you really uh, go about identifying a compound it's not only naturally occurring or medicinal compounds but even your synthetic compounds how exactly do you Oh there is something called what is called your dub, drug development uh, process where you have your target identification for example where exactly this particular drug may be not necessary cancer even even in your uh, regular antibacterial or your antifungal what exactly where exactly for example your cell division protein or your cell wall like your beta like uh, beta lactams you will identify your target identification then you go for your what is called your lead discovery okay then you will look for the different compounds which could be targeting this particular or your beta for example your beta 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 lactam analogs or um your isoniazid for your mtb analogs or any other different then go for your medical medicinal chemistry as a, or maybe one more approaches use your um, med medicinal approach and then and sometimes even in your uh, in silico studies this is your uh, dry lab where you have many drug libraries and then you look for analogs which are are uh, which are similar to your existing drugs and then you further what is the whole idea of this drug development is like to find better better novel drugs all the time there is always because of your resistance studies then after you are you are successful then you will look for all first thing you will look finish your uh, silico in silico and then your uh, in in vitro studies what do the in vitro studies to your simple uh, anti microbial testing or anti cancer you take many cancer cell lines supposing you want to come up with your breast cancer drug or triple negative breast cancer you came up with a very novel uh, com uh, compound something better like tamoxifen it is very much toxic you came up with a compound which has better permeability you say that it will have a better uh, Uh, uh better ic50 or better uh, validate validation you can be with this particular you do you select your breast cancer cell lines and do so many in vitro studies like your mtt assays like your apoptosis assays then many assays to show that this particular drugs have anti cancer properties and then after my all this is done i have shown in vitro i have shown in vivo then i will go for in vivo studies so first we take the uh, nude mice models where you put all the cells or maybe for example you are taking only the uh, cells of this particular uh, your 
your breast cancer cell lines like say for example 231 you put those cells you induce uh, tumor formation and then you give your inhibitor then further go on with then this has sustained the the mice they have mice have responded well there is no they are the this drug particularly has able to contain your tumor then you go to your clinical trials you have your there is much of your and again you have lo lots of in vivo imaging solutions to support drug development that is like um, you have where exactly is this drug able to can you track it yes and then you have the your uh, this is the path uh, workflow for that you have the model development then you have the target validation then you have the where you measure your uh, uh, different uh, assays and then so forth when it comes to clinical trials this is very simple basic diagram it may not be as simple as this you have the preclinical trials which are like your phase 1 phase 2 phase 3 it, it's just not necessarily with respect to the participant number uh, if it is like if if all your preclinical criteria are taken up it goes for the phase 1 trials where a small number of participants are taken up then to the phase 2 where you have you know what exactly yes this person this This particular group of people have responded to the novel drug. Yes, I will go for. And first thing, very very toxicity. First thing, it they it can't be just like that. You have a drug and all that. And moreover, you have to see the solvent wherever you are, you are putting up in the drug. You should maybe your drug is very solid, very insoluble. You put it in a very strong solvent, and that you can't bring it up to this level. So these are all very very important factors for uh, for your drug discovery process. Then you have. Uh, around as you have increased for the phase 3 uh, phase 3 here where you have 100 to 3000 participants and then you it will go for uh, to safety and effic eff effectiveness of the drug and then you go for the phase trials phase 4 where mostly after the fda reviews after the fda gets it, the drug draft gets um, approved and it is maybe uh, mostly in the market but only the last phase will only include the final of your uh, safety and uh, effectiveness first thing uh, for a drug or for any uh, to try it up a novel thing what was the earlier approach it it had mostly of your histologic classification in uh, earlier oncology patients were generally classified by the primary ca cancer which we already seen in your cancer detection methods and then your stage of your cancer tnm methods and they and to have have your uh, control trials your randomized control trials uh, you need to be uh, you had to have to, uh, each patient population would be going through the same standard therapy uh, standard therapies based on this particular uh, perspective uh, all the existing cancer drugs were uh, developed now uh, as we have seen so much of work coming upon the mechanisms of uh, cancer biology and, and all that so we have seen how uh, the cancer cell to uh, uh, cell growth and uh, uh, progression has been defined at molecular and cellular levels and this they so we have seen there are so many markers molecular markers at the genetic levels you know don't classify only according to the histology but you even give a morphology class up type to this tumors it is called mo mo molecular profiling or molecular stratification so this is a new term which we are coming across they uh, that is why uh it is no longer only this particular broad cytotoxic agents agents but uh, there we are also employing your molecular uh, targeted agents which are uh, which they will act perhaps only on selectively on cancer cells for example your tki inhibitors your tyrosine kinase inhibitors which are uh, very well used in your Uh, lung cancer this molecular target is the spagens that target specific molecular markers include your uh, gefitinib and not uh, for the egfr uh, gene mutation positive for your uh, uh, recurrent uh, metastatic non spamous lung cell uh, carcinoma uh, for your alk alk fusion positive we use the uh, crizotinib uh, alectinib and seritinib there are also we are also using there is a lot of change in the Uh, the whole uh, scenario of employing targeted precision therapy for uh, that particular cancer so how did uh, so you had two types of trials so ones were patient centric and some were drug centric so traditionally they were uh, more of drug centric you identify the function of the drug and then you administer it to the patients so then they but how do you 
when you go for a novel drug maybe as i mentioned in the phase or for your clinical trials how do we go when there is uh, when you want to aim to uh, identify certain attributes of the patient so you have to be very specific for example uh, your uh, gen genomic aberrations for example this snb polymorphism or this particular mutation so can you put this patients in this particular drug regimen there is a large variability in your genomic subgroups your uh, micro environment your baseline characteristics and all this you know uh, the, your uh, drug your uh, patient population who is taking a particular drug there are absolutely a heterogeneous population which is not only specific uh, uh, histologically but also your gene agnostic trials this is very your phase 3 randomized trials are very critical for regulatory approvals <clears throat> since the anti tumor after was you have two arms you have the comparative arm and usually you compare you have the conventional therapy as a comparative mark and then maybe my therapy whatever like if i have come up with a new drug then i should have a randomized control trial so how do i go about this usually and what is the end point how do i say that this particular drug is effective you even have so many other parameters to judge that this is like our very favorite line for this whole course is one size fit all medicine is not there it's not now no longer this one for example just imagine you have the therapy which is fitting for all patients you know some patients take the adverse benefit some patients will benefit and some patients will not have benefit this is how the general traditional now from here patients are grouped by your subtypes you are stratified this whole population you have stratified us based on your risk profiles then you say on your demographic for example your uh, caucasians uh, group for lung cancer the mutation profile how does it differ from the europeans and then socio economic of their maybe for example if they are working in uh, very coal factories or any other uh, chemical factories which we uh, which we have seen molecular mechanisms of carcinogens if you recollect and then clinical features this is also very very important some patient, patients may uh, may come up with symptoms some may not present sim themselves with some symptoms then biomarkers you are different your companion diagnostics are very very important here you are creating a molecular sub population you are coming to something what is called precision medicine individual patient levels how is their molecular tumor different their lifestyle their preference their health history any hereditary cancers complaints and then exogenous factors all this which we have discussed now when you are giving your drug treatment can you see here you have the three different you have a different kind here see it is a same drug here but whereas those two colors because you are able to stratify for example patient with one mutation this mutation is wild type in one patient for example and it is a mutant can you are able to supposing as i told you in our earlier class you don't want to unnecessarily burden the patient with drugs also you know that he is definitely a mutator suppose he is a wild type and you may not have a specific drug for that wild type uh, tumor what we need to you don't want to burden with the patient with the adverse effects of the drug you are coming up with something what is called your individualized uh, uh, therapy or individualized therapy there is a treatment uh, shift in your treatment strategies that is as a result why we are using we are uh, we are totally employing a precision uh, oncology drug now what all do you patient uh, centric uh, trials uh, so there are uh, there are uh, as they were as i told you they were drug centric you should avoid usually um, unvalidated surrogate uh, uh and points in the in the recent drugs you should have uh, it should not have more just side effects you cannot be using definitely any drug no generic drugs or and they shouldn't be biases in a clinical design maybe like favoring one particular compound over another due to any other interest and uh, on, uh, overly restrictive exclusive criteria should not be there should not be adapted you should this particular patient centric trials you know they should be they should have hard endpoints are validated the sur uh, surrogates you need to have a pakka end, end point which is a very this end point could be like mostly you measure with your overall survival progression free survival in the uh, cancer patient you have uh, linear trials with higher intended effective sites then you should be able to promote this particular patient centric trials you know should be in uh, be able to uh, be show a promise for investment in r and d and biomarker uh, uh, discovery 
so they are for these particular trials are fundamental for achieving better outcomes for the uh, precision oncology this is not very perfect trail may not be uh, able to achieve but we have to ensure that this particular any trial has to be their best oh, so and every uh, patient has to be to, uh, definitely be informed about this trial and they have to be um, ethically approved uh, as to uh, see to it that we are in particular given guidelines with the international uh, boards we, we even have uh, we have mentioned very briefly last time so if you recollect you have the molecular molecular monitoring of patients treated with precision therapeutics to demonstrate your proof of mechanism for example you really want to show how your uh, action of the drug is there you uh, give uh, for example uh, we have a breast cancer or a lung cancer patient and you really want to give a novel uh, therapeutic say for example say an fda approval uh, drug to the patient i want to try it in a new one but before you give it to the patient you should be going through your uh, non clinical model your um, mice models so that's you excise the tumor of the, from the patient and and it is uh, put on to the mice and from that you will uh, go for uh, after it goes with onto the mice you will give it the same inhibitor for example your gefitinib what it gives to the patient you give it into the mice you will really see is the tumor able is the mice able to oh still is the tumor surviving in the particular mice or is it like uh, uh, in the presence of an inhibitor sometimes the tumors overgrow the inhibitor it's not that the mice will be healthy but still you measure your uh, size of the mid tumor in that case there is every likely event that the patient also may not be responsive to that particular drug here itself you are having another model where you can particularly even see for a patient for example you may require 2 to 3 months to monitor the effectiveness of a drug whereas a mice for a mice another 15 days to 20 days yes we can know you can slowly we can really predict the models the efficacy of the drug using this particular mice model and then you go for your uh, other uh, like you go for the sequencing for the same tumor before you implant it into the mice then you look for the methylation then you for the fish then the ihc and then you look for the uh, expression array for uh, usually uh, patients are eligible for early or late phase clinically trials they ana we analyze the tumor and other uh, tissues for pathway activation of resistance and then based on the molecular characterization of the tumor for example if it's a mutation positive here or an or a wild type you uh, the, the patient is assigned to that particular trial and then the patient is particularly monitored and then uh, post treatment also we, we go for several molecular uh, reanalysis and then uh, different uh, clinical observations for example your pet ct then you have the uh, functional images for your now uh, the prognostic uh, for your normal and tumor uh, tissue uh, predictive diagnostic markers and then your uh, that and then your you go use your ctcs and your cacs they, this is like uh, you have the molecular mechanisms to really uh, demonstrate your proof of mechanism for uh, proof of to, for uh, the development of targeted therapeutic agents which focus on uh, which uh, which have focus on the uh, use of your uh, pre clinical models to validate biomarkers that can substantially be with uh, tissues obtained from patients so this is a very very uh, important uh, of, of, of workflow alg algorithm for uh, for therapeutic uh, molecular monitoring of the novel therapeutics developed so this is exactly what i was uh, trying to tell you have your drug discovery and your drug development you have the target identification and validation and then uh, the pre lead identification where you identify the lead compounds and then pre clinicals then you have the phase 1 and 2 and 3 and then then you look for the uh, look for uh, exploratory mechanistic pathways. Now, what exactly are your readouts? What do I mean by readouts? How do I really measure? You need to have a measurable. For example, you do an ELISA, you have a spectrum reading. Or you do uh, any other uh, calorimetric assay, you have a reading. For uh, how do I know if my drug has worked on any of my models? This is like, uh, I use different models. Now, uh, first thing here, 
2D culture. For every cancer biology, we, we use MTTSA. That is something in the 2D, 2D culture where uh, you just coat the cell lines onto a, a plate. That you have the cells growing and then you had your inhibitor where you assume that the cells numbers have decreased and you just look for a simple viability assay. This is how your uh, uh, readouts are uh, it's cells viable if your inhibitor you have the viable cells here and this is the dead cells if your uh, inhibitor works uh, your cells would die when compared with your control where you it's very important you have a chance that it is very low cost you can even have uh, 90 from 96 well played to a 384 well plates and then it is many more drugs and it's not only one two you can do it for many drugs and then but it is like uh, it is not it is a bit uh, dependent you know uh, definitely no more longer if you stop it at 2d nobody will accept it you cannot and moreover if it you won't have a tumor micro environment which is very well uh, missing over here because it's only a pure homogeneous cancer cells whereas it doesn't happen like that right when we have seen tumor micro environment where you have your uh, cancer associated uh, uh, fibroblast and uh, we have other stroma cells and other uh, immune cells as part of it all that will be missing which would really influence the growth of your cancer cells right and definitely this culture conditions whatever we grow is 5% CO2 it's not a very uh, it's an artificial culture something a little better than this is your 3d organized where you just as I mentioned dissect your uh, surgically obtained tumor tissues and then you put it in a gelatin scaffold or your or on your uh, matrix gel or whatever that and allow it to grow in an artificial uh, medium and temperature yes the cells grow the tumor cells grow and then along with them you even have for example for your pancreatic tract adenocarcinoma you have the stellate cells growing on them yes you still say yes my 3d environment i am able to bring the tumor micro environment it's not very costly yes it can be have it can be scalable for th high throughput and then it is uh, amendable to rapid testing assay development and all However, a prolonged, uh, you cannot grow this maintain for maybe not for several, here supposing you have a, a 2D culture, you have thousands of generations you can maintain, but here no, because it's by virtue of its own, uh, until unless you extract your uh, stellate cells or any of this tumor cells and then you immortalize them, you cannot do that. That sometimes yes because of you take you you can't take more than a small few mm for your organizer you end up missing some of the tumor micro environment and non-physiologic culture uh, culture conditions then you have organ on chips which is very very widely used nowadays so then uh, yes it can be gone going for your uh, 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 high through uh, high throughput sometimes but not always and the patient derived xenografts where you have your mice model where the tumor is put into the mice and then you can see how the tumor is uh, formed here. Can you see that? You still maintain uh, in vivo uh, tumor micro environment. You can uh, show the drug uh, pharmacophinetics. Yes, it, can it be toxic? Yes, we can have the parameter. But however, it is very costly and it is like uh, tumor host species. See, for from human to mouse, there is a host species difference right and then of course uh, these are uh, nude mice you don't have a uh, immune uh, system what will happen if you have any uh, of this uh, not a nude mice and an ordinary mice the immune system will definitely recognize your cancer cells as foreign and definitely they could pro all in all probability they could be eliminated yes this is a very very important part in your uh, human patient also where you have yes in the trials definitely when some patients now many people are uh, enrolling uh, for uh, for any rare tumors and all yes this they they are uh, of course they should all this particular drugs whatever novel drugs we want to test on the no for this novel patients they have to pass through all this particular criteria and then only the patient and more importantly the safety and efficacy and non-toxicity you don't have to have a model establishment and all that yes very very important part is there's a high-end regulatory barriers not very well uh, permitted and it's very important to have a lot of regulations as i mentioned uh, because of the uh, human samples and uh, they are have to be uh, accessed everywhere you have the gene expressions then you look for the tumor volumes for example here at this particular organized you look for the size of the tumors then you look for cell mass and morphology and then uh, 
if it's like a micro device implantable micro device you have now role of how what is the role of your pharmacodynamics and dyna, uh, diagnostics in precision oncology this is very very important for your uh, uh, clinical trials or uh, to progress so how do you have your clinical trial uh, designs in this coming slides we will really see what exactly are is your clinical design how do you group a clinical design into your uh, uh, i mean for example are they patient specific or how do we have the drug specific now it's like it's with your clinical design trial designs basically on uh, because of the uh, are, are based on molecular markers and uh, they have gained to uh, change because of the changes in the chemotherapy agents yes they have got a lot of uh, popularity so trial designs called en enrichment designs or target is designs where uh, patient populations with a single molecule for uh, molecular marker for which a drug can be expected in a specific uh, tumor type in one single tumor type yes is there a single molecular marker for which is there is it like is there any uh, changes in this particular marker expression this uh, design is selected on this particular premise that the molecular marker has to be an uh, established marker for example your her2 it is supposed to be uh, which is strongly uh, correlated with the efficacy of an investigational drug it has to be biologically uh, demonstrated that drug test efficacy cannot be expected in marker negative cases for example if i don't have a mutation this drug will not be working and it is a diagnostic for and can have you developed a diagnostic tool for example a qpcr or for example or an ngs uh, or uh, or a simple uh, pcr also for uh, can you measure this molecular marker and not necessary and if this molecular marker shouldn't be measured only from a biopsy but if you as the treatment progresses you know you should be able to measure this particular marker and how can we do that as as i mentioned before using your cell free dna your ct dna you have a drug you have the molecular marker and then you have the functional consequences to evaluate your therapeutic re re regimens for your cancer based on the degree of target engagement and the downstream molecular in initiated uh, drug target interaction you need to have what is called pharmacodynamic markers pd markers very important they are molecular species that are altered in response to an oncologic drug or treatment and if measured can be used to establish your action mechanism of action of the drug uh, pd marker helps to define the drug induced pharmacological as as effect associated with the therapeutic uh, activity of the uh, agent a pd uh, effect does not by itself ensure patient in benefit but uh, benefit because biochemical uh, events downstream of the drug target may impair tumor cell care. we just can't say that i have a drug i have a marker chalo i have uh, totally gained i have mastered the tumor no you it is as i said it's a very intricate mechanism of uh, uh, very beautiful mechanism of cascade pathways it may be like maybe a what if uh, the one point of action the drug is able to inhibit but further downstream of the drug target it may not be very active your pharmacodynamic bio biomarkers uh, may not be predictive of patient benefit from a specific intervention this is a, a, a development of a predictive biomarker is the goal for precision oncology for the first step in the process is to apply establish your molecular proof of mechanism in molecular proof of uh, mechanism pom in human tumors and you have to uh, establish particular mechanism in the uh, early phase your phase 1 and phase 2 of your uh, clinical trial you have the drug and then you have the what is uh, um, the molecular proof of uh, uh, mechanism going to do it show this to the proximity of biomarker to target is it like uh, that is the target itself or upstream of for example your phosphor is for your e et akt and your erk then which tissue where exactly is it like your uh, hair follicle skin or whatever how much is it inhibition and how long is the drug effective pharmacokinetics uh, and your pharmacodynamics relationship then uh, is it relationship with preclinical to cytotoxicity and efficacy and relationship with clinical toxicity and uh, efficacy this is also here you have your mouse models then you have uh, develop your uh, 
proof of concept what are the functional consequences like are this uh, are this still growing for example you take the tumor and stain for your uh, k67 klt pet then your metabolism then angiogenesis then dna damage and apoptosis you have your definitely certain end points here what exactly where you have your molecular arguments and then your functional consequences now here we see what are the licensed uh, um, anti cancer drugs this is very very uh, important and some of the companion diagnostics to this particular drug imatinib for your uh, uh, then seek it and then it's in the kit mutations then this is a very very important drug uh, trastuzumab for your head to four in the and this is all the test you have to do for uh, that is your IHC so from the pathology it has to be done petrizumab for your head three and then this is in the IHC IHC it's done then here you have the molecular diagnostics coming up here then where you have your uh, erlotinib, efitinib, debrafenib, uh, bimurafenib uh, for uh, so this is for used for your EGFR where you are L0 to epitinib and how do we check for these mutations using the qPCR or your NGS panels and uh, and all that then you have your uh, trematinib for MEP and then your uh, chrysotinib for your ALK so then again uh, tamoxifen for ER positive this is for the breast cancer this is all different different uh, targets are there now are we using of each drug only for one cancer no this is where i will clearly slowly uh, come across uh, the different clinical trials or how they should be it is like uh, you have the BRAF mutations here so for your whim and that they are there in your uh, melanoma or head to mutations which are there in the breast cancer that is you have a drug uh, that uh, that can target an aberrant pathway so now it, this aberrant pathway may not be specific only to that particular cancer so you have them as a specific genetic this particular drugs can particular tar target the pathways in all different cancers please make this uh, point this approach does not always lead to finding populations of patients with mutant oncogenes. You may have to end up screening people for their different mutant on oncogenes every time. Several uh, cancer uh, uh, boards, uh, your national uh, comprehensive cancer ga guidelines, all of them they recommend to go for different mutation testing, for example, for uh, lung cancer. It is a mandatory regulatory uh, 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 approval uh, to uh, to go for mutation and amplification uh, status of the tumor or molecular profiling of the tumor before the therapy is started. Now, what are the different endpoints? you need to have intermediate endpoints of response along with your molecular markers this is how the typical uh, tumor baseline maybe you want to know that the tumor has re uh, reduced then you have the intermediate endpoints such as your PSA then your CA125 then you use your markers for the mutational markers then you use your PET and your MRI, MRIs then you ch check for the sampling of biomarkers to detect early uh, progression your ctc cell free dna and then you look for mutations and the gene copy number and from and again this response then progressive response uh, disease now you can see the tumor has size has increased yes the tumor it didn't really respond then you take the tumor biopsy and look for any novel mutations gene copy number variations gene expressions and then you look for proteomics so intermediate end points of response and uh, reassessment of the disease and during progression these parameters are very very uh, uh, important and here we show that what are the tissues and what sometimes even have the blood also uh, to to evaluate this uh, blood markers so it is very important to identify uh, uh, validate your surrogate uh, endpoints such as your technologies what we have seen such as your uh, say, ctdna then your uh, machine learnings they can help to identify your uh, surrogate uh, endpoints and potentially expedite the uh, time and your cost of it's always easy to take a blood as we have seen rather than to take a biopsy pit right the science of clinical trials in his oncology uh, has evolved to including your uh, 
uh, phase 1 uh, dose finding trials and phase 2 studies to establish the efficacy in a single tumor type through phase 3 trials to compare uh, the standard of care with potential advances with maybe compare your original drug with a different uh, with another standard drug and then so when, when you are doing much what is it uh, what can you expect this much of response the patient is a response it is like uh, uh, higher cure rates in locally advanced cancers so this is a very very uh, typical approach you have the this is basically a statistical approach to uh, categorize your uh, clinical trials where you have the frequentistic uh, approach and the uh, Bayesian uh, approach. What happens here? You fix your fix your design, set analysis plan, monitor and oversee your data uh, collection, then conduct your content uh, interference based on point estimates, then look for uh, coincidence uh, intervals. Here, what does it happen? You have to have your simulations, team deliberations, and you take a lot of preliminary data to design. Uh, you need to have a lot of uh, parametric uh, prior prob probability distribution to decide on your designs. And then you ca collect data and use to update parameters. Based on the posterior, then you have the conclusions here. What is an enrichment trail? Trail designs called enrichment designs or targeted designs. They are studies where patients populations with a single molecular marker for which a drug's effects can be expected in a specific tumor type. So very very important single molecular marker it is very much a specific. This is a complete targeted design. This design is selected on the uh, on the notion that you know the molecular marker is an established marker which is strongly correlated with the efficacy of your uh, investigation drug yes so i'll tell you the example it has been biologically demonstrated that cannot be uh, drug efficacy uh, uh, cannot be expected in the marker negative case for example i have an head to negative yes i cannot i can say that yes this drug will not work this is such a very fantastic uh, uh, and uh, this is one of the very uh, selection uh, assumption for the enrichment design trial and there should be a diagnostic tool for uh, this molecular marker. This diagnostic tool should be like suppose you take pre-treatment one biopsy. Then after some time during the treatment you take a biopsy maybe IHC. And then after treatment then how is this particular marker stated has been is evolving. So a companion diagnostic you are supposed to have. So you have very importantly trastuzumab. This is a very very uh, important uh, uh, molecular enrichment design. Uh, sorry, the enrichment design clinical trial uh, N9831 trial for HER2 positive uh, mm. breast cancer. So and even for your to toga trial on HER2 positive stomach cancer. This is very very and then so you have identified a biomarker is HER2 positive or negative. You can do an IHC or your fish. So, if the molecular marker is not able to establish, if only my molecular marker is not good, the use of your marker stratified design may be considered. You in this, what will happen here in this design? You patients are assigned to marks um, to arms by molecular positivity or negativity, and you will randomly pick patients within this arm. What happens a master protocol trial? It uses a common system for your patient selection, logistics, templates, and data management. Though histologic and hematological, uh, your hematological specimens of your patients enrolled in master protocol trials are me measured using your common basic system like your IHCs and your NGS, and then you collect the completely coherent molecular data. So, patients can participate in sub-studies in which they meet eligible criteria based on their molecular marker data. Thus, enrolling in a ma uh, ma master protocol trial, it will increase the chance of participation of people in, in a trial that is most suitable for a given patient. Even if there are no sub-studies that a given patient can participate, they will be followed. For example, the patient is positive and we know that his mut mutation status is such that he will not be able to take the track. They can be placed on waiting list until unless for the or different other study is started. This is how uh, it uses a common uh, system for your uh, patient selection. You have the, this is your analysis of your genomic uh, information using NGS, marker 1 positive, 2 positive, negative 4 
all positive positive you have the marker power one positive sub study type one sub study type two and then a different so on and you can have as many uh, sub study types based on the different particular drugs you should need to have a yeah that's very very important you should have need to have lead drugs histological and hematologic uh, logical space specimens are enrolled in the master trials are also measured and analyzed using the common basic system as i mentioned so this is like the natural history data from a waiting list can be used as controls this may be uh, in evaluating the efficacy of the uh, drug in this particular single uh, arm studies suppose you have the can we use this as you need to have a different uh, specific control you have common protocols that assess the combination of several molecular markers and their targeted therapies by means of uh, multiple sub studies and uh, they are required for single or multiple tumor types these protocols are master protocols and are driving attention for your next generation clinical trial designs trial purpose master protocols they can both be expl uh, expl uh, exploratory or confirmatory there are exploratory or mostly single arm study sub studies and um, confirmatory master protocols are multiple randomized sub studies for e either trial type the design and uh, uh, statistical uh, considerations are common standards for all sub studies different form of traditional one indication at a uh, at a time that is a uh, this is completely different you need to look only at one indication at one particular time in a clinical setting we have uh, that only test one drug or one have one histological parameter in a clinical trial master uh, protocols they evaluate multiple drugs multiple histologies or multiple molecular subtypes in parallel for example you have an anostring you have different 360 panel you can you can have a uh, different from using many other uh, tools you can have tcga data sets and you can compare and you can clearly say that if this particular uh, if this particular molecular subtypes can they have different drugs or you can clearly check how is their progression in response to this particular drug such multiple drugs they allow uh, logistic uh, efficacy you have centralized screening then you can have a uh, color uh, biomarker profiling and then this can lead to a much accelerated uh, clinical drug de development uh, process that is why we are calling this next generation clinical trial design so there are uh, your you have three types of your, your master protocol types such as your basket types umbrella and platform uh, based on the characteristics of the study example the population disease histological types molecular markers based on that what does basket type do it evaluates uh, one targeted therapy on multiple diseases or multiple um, uh, disease sub type umbrella trial type it evaluates multiple targeted therapies for at least one disease then platform it evaluates several targeted therapies for one diseases continuously and further accept additions or uh, exclusions of the new therapies during the trial this is a very very uh, important definitions which we all have to keep in mind what happens in basket tri trials so it eval evaluates one targeted uh, therapy on multiple diseases subtypes you have tumor type a tumor type b or then tumor type x y z different different uh, either the same tumor different types you have a marker a plus a targeted drug a then you have the marker and targeted drug then we are stratifying this this is one more of uh, lalotrectinib was approved for trk fusion uh, cancer for positive cancers in adult and uh, children using this particular um uh, basket trials so they so they have uh, 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 the, the therapeutic uh, this you exemplify exam the therapeutic effects of molecularly targeted agents for several tumor types that may have a common single marker or a genetic mutation so in this scenario this scenario what will happen the group tumor types from a, form a basket and sub uh, sub uh, studies are conducted by tumor groups within it basket trials uh, basket trials trials are often conducted as a single arm 
phase 2 trials with the purpose of evaluating your proof of concept in a early stage of development generally the number of participants in the individual sub studies are between usually between 20 and 15 and hypothesis that can demonstrate statistical uh, significance are made only when there is a major uh, therapeutic effect, uh, efficacy so it is like a signal finding trial signal you find yes there could be a lead if i use this particular uh, drug two stage or multi stage device for the may be used as such basket trials are characterized by the comprehensive execution of single arm trials with a small number of patients which enable efficient enrollment for rare cancers or for a uh, rare fractions so basket tri- basket trials have the assumption that they allow a fairly accurate uh, prediction of whether a tumor with particular molecular characteristics uh, will respond to that particular uh, targeted therapy irrespective of the histological uh, type of the tumor yes yes can you have this is usually you have the molecular markers as well as your histological markers it is it, you can have this basket try basket uh, trials to uh, design to set or test one investigated drug or a drug combination in multiple cancers or cancer subtypes with a common biomarker linked to the th- therapeutic uh, target of the lab drug so as i mentioned that uh, your larotrastinib was approved for your trk fusion positive cancers in adult and uh, children so they are accessible for patients with rare tumors this is when so ch- so you may have a challenge that um, uh, that the molecular may, may <clears throat> variants may not be the only driver of tumor response and unpredicted uh, heterogeneous we are not talking as i always mention these tumors are always heterogeneous so for example you are giving only a target uh, drug to one particular marker it they may not be uh, very much uh, effective that is like so for example you have your vemurafenib which works in braf mutated mel- melanoma but it doesn't work in your braf mutated co- colorectal cancer it was proved uh, either you use this particular trials in uh, pooled analysis across tumor types or independent test for this is your pooled analysis for many tumors or you use your different independent tumor what happens in the pooled analysis types it grows uh you will not you are totally ignoring your tumor heterogeneity uh, effect and then uh, you may have like suppose one individual may not hasn't responded you you may have to uh, say that it's a, it is going to be a play, failed study for all individuals in the basket trials it is you have to be very very uh, uh, careful to tackle this challenge uh, many many uh, basket uh, designs have emerged to tackle this particular challenge one more very very interesting type uh, design for your umbrella uh, trials that is your uh, is your, uh, apart from your basket trials isn't it very fundamental very nice uh, picture they evaluate multiple targeted therapies for one disease or several disease Exp- for example they are expected to respond to an investigational drug in oncology sub studies are conducted to evaluate targeted therapies that correspond to different molecular markers or genetic mutations within a particular tumor type in that case the tumor type is your umbrella under which sub uh, studies of each molecular marker are operated here you have the different molecular markers then sub studies again you may have even a single arc or uh, which can be phase 2 or phase 2 or 3 trials or uh, and they will be compared with your uh, standard therapies or your standard placebo and umbrella types uh, have a common uh, system that unifies uh, uh, molecular profiles of patients serum to your uh, umbrella so while uh, basket trials are generally arm specific uh, sub studies uh the, that are exploratory in nature umbrella trials are often single arm or randomized sub studies that are confirmatory so you remember we have exploratory master trials and then you have the confirmatory master master trials your extrapolatory are in the uh, basket trials and the 
confirmatory are are coming to your uh, master trials here so but uh, the umbrella trials are normally usually large scale and long term master protocol trials but when the standard therapy comes during that the therapy the clinical significance of comparing to a control group of patients undergoing standard the therapy is lost because uh, it it may take a little longer so uh, umbrella trials are also termed as uh, molecular allocation studies so you have the control here what is your control is like as i mentioned your different <coughs> standard treatment or your placebo or anything marker a targeted drug targeted drug and then it, this is a very very uh, important uh, master uh, protocol type which is your umbrella types you have your uh, basket designs for example uh, you have the v basket which has for in the early phase 2 brac mutation it is like uh, uh testing for the efficacy of your uh, uh, vemurafenib in patients with brap b 600 e mutation it is was usually in squamous cell lung the carcinoma they have tested and then uh, uh, colorectal cancer and then edeman chester disease or langer langerhans cell uh, histiocytosis so there here they found it is a 42% orr but whereas uh, this is 0% in uh, colorectal cancer then again you have your uh, loxo trk 14001 scout navigate phase 1 trials for um, ntrk fusion to te test the uh, efficacy and fusion in um, ntrk fusions for patients with ntrk fusions then you have your alka uh, star trk1 and star trk2 phase 1 and 2 this is your basket trials then coming to your umbrella trials which are well validated you have your uh, lung map then uh, where your then you have the alchemist which we will see in detail later now we will talk about the different clinical trials for which are currently in used in oncology coming quickly again back to our different uh, biomarker companion biomarker uh, identification then you have the assay development then look for the clinical assay uh, application in drug discovery then assay validation then clinical validate of your particular drug then get the regulatory approvals and then how do you incorporate in your clinical practice these are your different uh, uh, anti cancer drugs uh, such as your uh, uh, cetuximab and your uh, pantomimab for your crc where and then the markers are the um, ras mutations you have the parp inhibitors for ovarian cancer uh, then for the melanoma you have the debrafenib vemurafenib and uh, trametinib for the braf mutation then you have the eltonib imatinib um, pembrolizumab we have studied all this right for your uh, immunotherapy then Uh, trastuzumab is for the very important very one of the very important uh, trials which we have uh, studied enrichment trials and nivolumab for your melanoma for the braf mutation what are the samples you take either you take your liquid biopsies uh, that is your blood for circulating tumor cells circulating tumor dna then you take the exosomes micro rnas or you take even directly the tumor biopsies you have the ct guided biopsy where Uh, where the tumor tissue is excised and the IHC is done and you embed the uh, tissues in the FFP we have uh, gone through this uh, thoroughly their uh, basket trials are basically uh, histologically agnostic studies that typically focus on a variety of tumors umbrella trials use multiple drugs that target multiple mutations in a range of tumor types and in the context of a single study very very important they may be randomized or non randomized so n of 1 uh, clinical experiences in which a patient with a tumor type that is uh, unlikely to undergo an objectively defined response demonstrates Uh, local clinical ben uh, very uh, robust clinical benefit from ther from therapy and if you can id ca characterize the tumors from such patients and uh, can define unique molecular uh, signatures that are really very well responding to this particular um, uh, therapies they you can really come up with the predictive signatures power after the clinical trials for a defined patient population so this is how uh, basket trial this is how a very good uh, uh, basket trials you know uh, you can uh, you have the lung cancer where uh, you have the basket trials then you have the 
uh, umbrella trials and then the uh, exceptional responder trials so what happens here you have single drug targeting a single uh, mutation variety of tumors carrying a genetic aberration x this is a single drug you have drug a drug a this is a how uh, so but those tumors are different you have the lung the colon and uh, the liver but whereas in the umbrella what is happening here you have the same tumor type and again even a variety tumor type and here also in the same tumor type you have a different see here you see it's only a single uh, mutation only a single molecular mo molecular difference but here you have a difference you have xyz here in the lung xyz in the lung and even in the uh, liver and in the colon so you either have a randomized or a non randomized these are rules based treatment you have uh, uh, assignment of uh, uh, of per patient based on the review of the individual profile data you have different drugs for example x the drug a is coming up to your x mutation then you have drug b to y and c and d whereas your exceptional responder trials any cancer type and drug where a patient had unusually robust clinical benefit this is the very fantastic part you have the drug exceptional response then this it's coming down you can see the size of the uh, tumor coming down then following find you will find them find the molecular signature x in patients with exceptional response you will find the molecular signature z in this particular patients with exceptional response then conduct clinical trials in the molecularly defined patient sub populations you are totally stratifying the patients based on the tumor molecular or uh, exceptional response or uh, one of one clinical experience in which any patient with a tumor type that is unlikely to undergo an uh, objectively defined response demonstrates robust clinical benefit from therapy because this it really very very uh, it, it looks very it sounds very fantastic but uh, it is like uh, characterization of this tumors from such patients they you can identify unique molecular signatures that can be uh, tested for their predictive power in subsequent clinical uh, trials for defined patient populations what is the level of uh, what do you mean by this level of ev uh, evidence for prioritization of uh, actionable molecular while uh, really talk expand this nci match uh, trial what it is you have a gene variant uh, uh, credential in this one you identified uh, uh, drug and then a gene variant then molecular characterization is an eligible criteria for an ongoing clinical trial utilizing that drug or the abnormality has been identified in the n of 1 clinical response then you have the clinical response in the level 3 where models with variant respond while models without so for example if there is a mutation yes this mutants one will respond to that particular drug while the people without uh, mutation or the they do not then you have a um, gain of function of mutation demonstrated in a preclinical model and loss of uh, for example your tumor suppressor gene or which is whose function is lost so once i match stands for national cancer institute molecular uh, analysis for therapy of choice so this is a very uh, fantastic trail it's an umbrella study to examine the hypothesis that uh, treating adult solid tumors and lymphomas with molecular targeted therapies independent of disease histology can be effective i mean this is a very very fantastic uh, but uh, usually they find the response straight over 6000 patients have been acquired at over 1000 uh, clinical uh, trial sites initially all this uh, 6000 patients in this particular trial underwent uh, uh, fresh tumor biopsies for next generation sequence by a centralized uh, laboratory network very important and then yeah, uh, then uh, uh, 30 drugs from a wide range of pharmaceutical firms uh, they permitted uh, acquiral of the patients with low prevalence mutations to a series of phase 2 investigations very very interesting study so it is composed of uh, 24 uh, sub studies that evaluate the efficacy of at least 17 of your targeted uh, therapies for solid tumors and inform uh, and uh, lymphomas that were treated for at least uh, with uh, one regimen your response rate is the primary 
end point so you have the genetic as i've said you have identified the actionable uh, mutation then you have the study agent is it stable stable disease complete or partial response and then continue on study agent suppose uh, until progression then your uh, your progressive disease and then if it is prick disease is progressing check for additional uh, mutations so maybe this drug particular drug uh, was uh, this particular patient was wild type for that mutation now did he develop any mutations that is why he is getting and resistance to that particular drug yes again if you follow the actionable mutation is there a chance further to go down no no additional mutations are were, uh, were detected but still there is uh, the pay, uh, it is progressive disease he is still progressing then the patient can be removed off so this is a typical uh, very well uh, document very well uh, algorithm for uh, uh, nci match nci molecular analysis for therapeutic choice molecular analysis for uh, therapeutic uh, choice trial this is very very uh, important algorithm where uh, and it uh, and and it is uh, one more very very important algorithm is your alchemist not a novel alchemist but adjuvant uh, uh, lung cancer enrichment marker identification and sequencing trial very very uh, interesting uh, uh, trial here where alk and egfr positive patients are enrolled in the near phase 3 randomized sub study uh, which comparing uh, your uh, Sriton, uh, so you see in recollect in my uh, first uh, slide where I showed about the inhibitors or randomized uh, compa uh, comparing uh, erlotinib for alk positive patients they use this drug to placebos. The primary endpoint is is like your overall survival and an interim analysis is planned. The patients who were both alk and EGFR negative PDL in expression one is measured as they are considered for enrollment in a rand this if you know we have one uh, immunotherapy target if you recollect that comprised uh, nivolumab uh, administration group to an observation group the primary endpoint of each trial is overall survival and an interim analysis is pla planned so this is uh, one more example this is their uh, alchemist try here you have your uh, mm, very much uh, very interesting with uh, resectable uh, lung adenocarcinoma and uh, in this trial they have screened tumors for their EGFR ALK mutation this is your workflow so the clinical TNM status was taken pre-operation option then your uh, after uh, uh, the operation also the TNM status then you staged the uh, um, tumors or the histopathologically and then look for the uh, age then uh, local test look for the qpcr for your uh, egfr and alk and then uh, the patients have to go through the epidemiological questionnaire and uh, then all this particular uh, details have taken if it is like uh, if egfr or alk uh, uh, positive assessment for adjuvant treatment trials yes went about egfr or alk negative willingness to be followed for recurrence for five years they should be in part of yes the follow-up has to be there this is the workflow how it goes this typically explains how a uh, drug discovery uh, trials uh, go go on ffp block uh, then uh, you have the questionnaire uh, according to your epidemiology if the patient is not uh, 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 resectable or like you know that the, the uh, surgery is not going and and that TNM does not fit the eligibility criteria the patient is off the study then again after uh, operation FFP then uh, go for uh, the genotype slides for genotyping scrolls for uh, genomics then you have the screening uh, component PC testing for uh, EGFR mutation then ALK red mesh rearrangements patients whose tumors cannot be evaluated by the uh, ELSA class central lab in the central lab uh, if they were in suppose for example if the quality of the FFP is not good they were moved off the study if uh, EGFR uh, positive what is the treatment trial they have given this particular treatment numbers then they are uh, given for this particular um, uh, enrolled on uh, adjuvant treatments if EGFR negative and ALK negative 
you know what did they do they went on for the uh, research company where the blood it's not only our ffp they even uh, blood sent directly to nci for them for the dna germline analysis on uh, patients associated with the uh, genetic research then then they have sent this particular tissues to different places for genomic research deep sequencing and exon sequencing and then evaluation of the uh, epidemiologic correlation um, observational study with uh, to occurrence for uh, how was their study for five years how did the patient keep at recurrence patients should undergo biopsy to confirm recurrence if deemed clinically appropriate by treating clinician with some uh, tissue uh, donated for research without this mutations they for patients without these mutations they will be enrolled in a registry study and have their tumors undergo whole exome sequence. If they relapse, every attempt will be made to resequence their tumor DNA at that time to determine the, uh, the natural genomic history of this particular. So this is a very wonderful alka, uh, algorithm, alchemist trial. For example, how you know, and it's a very 6000. This is and that too for lung cancer. Difficult to get your biopsy bits. That this was which was uh, very, very well. Uh, uh, taken forward in precision oncology. So these are the different trials uh, we have. You have the B triple two five, which is a phase two multicenter unblinded uncontrolled trial, and they have uh, tested in uh, imatinib on forty uh, carcinomas. One eighty six patients uh, were enrolled, and the response rate is the endpoint. So for many of these trials, your BAF uh, BRAF V three sixty is also a. Um, multi-center unblinded uncontrolled trail memrafenib and uh, cetuximab for on multiple uh, class uh, carcinomas the disease was tested then you have 122 patients the A acac which used uh, crizotinib on breast gastrointestinal breast cancer ovarian thyroid altmetros uh, ron fusion 488 patients were enrolled nci match which we have seen for uh, EGFR met AL cross so for uh, for your lymphomas melanomas and then you have your ispy2 shiva and the nci2 this one is for your different uh, allotinib this is for uh, alk mutations and then uh, lepatinib uh, tra uh, trastuzumab sorafenib imetinib Des, uh, desertinib, bemurafenib, all this drugs, tamoxifen, and then you have the different targets. Then, uh, this is for all advanced tumors which are resistant to um, uh, standard treatment. What is the endpoint here? They would assess the patients, 195 patients who were enrolled, and it should be a progression free survival. This is how they have employed different clinical trials so similarly you have your alchemist which we have just discovered and then we have the lung map seamless phase two three randomized trial four and then you have uh, 170 patients in the lung patch um, uh, in the phase two 400 patients in the phase three then you had the focus four uh, phase two phase three designed multi-center unblinded randomized trial you have drug targets such as your braf inhibitors and then uh, you have the battle one trial phase two single center adaptive randomized trial many of this particular drugs were used and you are targeting your egfr keras braf vegf rxrs and cyclin d1 now after talking about uh, so much of uh, precision uh, uh, oncology in drug design what are the important drugs what are the clinical trials what are the different clinical trials and then now shall we just uh, come to a very uh, team effort it's not like you know uh, it's like now we know we now say that cancer doesn't fit one size doesn't fit all it's so now you need to have each treatment patient's treatment strategy has to be tailored tailored to fit at home then how many people would you need this is not like a single effort person effort you need to have a multidisciplinary treatment team effort you have the core team and the non-core team where the core team consists of your immediate surgeon pathologist then your oncologist and the non-core is your uh, genetist then your physicians nuclear medicine palliative care this uh, and here your uh, importance of your molecular biology or your molecular biologist or your molecular scientist very well important here 
so it's not like that how do you take decisions how do you take uh, decisions that uh, you are going to have this particular patient given this particular dream no it is not an individual uh, Uh, decision it is a uh, this particular patient is responsibility of that particular organization then you need to have a very well placed tumor boards to take decisions but now we are coming to an other term called as a molecular tumor board very important if it is like molecular you who had a, a regularly a tumor board only where you had a pathologist radiologist uh, surgeons and then your medical oncologist they will give a diagnosis you have your pet ct then you have the pathology you you sub characterize based on the histology and then go for treatment surgery the chemotherapy radiotherapy targeted therapy that's all this year but whereas a molecular uh, tumor board so just this advancement you know the whole uh, thing has taken a drift with your evolution of your ngs next generation sequencing here where you are giving so much information about the tumor it is also very much a challenge for the clinicians to take the right decision to give the right treatment you have the uh, diagnosis you, you have a bio bioinformatic platform you have a genomic platform and then you have the database can i compare is it the first mutations which i have seen in this cohort of patients or are they there yes there is so much of data available in your tcga data sets and then you have the uh, treatment apart from your regular treatment you even have your targeted therapy or your clinical trials so this is something which is very very important part to have a particular clinical trial you need to have your molecular tumor board due to the impact of molecular uh, biology as a tool to support different therapeutic decisions there was a need to add to the standard so, yeah, yeah, molecular tumor board comprises of series of specialists focused on molecular biologists uh, different scientists and counselors so, what does this impact uh, how does it impact on uh, the clinical management of patients with cancer uh you have here it aims to improve your patient management and outcome yes definitely you have many much of information about the tumor molecular profile yes you can in give a better outcome better result and then you have a lo- local multidisciplinary oncology group uh, which request uh, which will uh, request your mtb consultation that is your molecular tumor board group and then uh molecular tumor board will have a discussion their meeting about all the profile and then you will have a, a central regional uh, so it's not that only one testing for this tumor is done it's even done it at different levels and then you have the biomarkers uh, report and mtb uh, interpretation this data interpretation is very very important you should be able to say yes how this particular gene expression for example you have your bc316 your nano string how is this uh, gene expression related to the uh, biomarkers uh, report and mtb clinical uh, interpretation then data database consultation and patients personalized treatment recommendations according to to your uh, local mog standard uh, therapy and off label clinical trials yes as it improving the patient outcome is uh, uh, you have to adhere to mtb is uh, molecular tumor board therapeutic intent it is very very important for the best national and uh, uh, international guidelines is one of this is a very important factor for assessing your quali- quality of your um, molecular tumor board it it is very much highly a higher adherence to current guidelines has been uh, observed for both staging and treatment one one more very very important part is your uh, mtb recommendations is your documentation mtb recommendations should be clearly written on um, ad hoc recent reports documenting parameters apart from the patient information such as the age sex smoking status and all that which is regular by part of the uh, by virtue of uh, all your electronic uh, data medical records will carry all that so you should uh, this part, particular documents should have your driver notations copy number structural vari- variations including your portion genes then you should be able to say druggable molecular alterations micro satellite instability tumor mutations is very 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 important tmb uh, how are these alterations indicating drug resistance then mtb conclusions recommendations and then potentially available 
they should be able to tell this particular clinical not necessarily uh, all drugs in clinical uh, trials but even some particular uh, uh, drugs which are in the market or also this MTB has to be able to molecular tumor board has to recommend then uh, you have your uh, a very important uh, data you have your pathological data you have the imaging data then uh, what is the available treatment as i said multidisciplinary tumor dose all the patient characteristics isn't it very fantastic image this one where you have your molecular information and then you have your molecular tumor board it's not necessary only the oncologist uh, uh, which are only taking part in this decision sometimes all oncologists may not be well informed with exactly the different uh, molecular uh, profiling techniques and the terminologies yes that is the reason why genetics and the molecular scientists are part of your molecular tumor boards they should always be patient identification reporting style interpretation they uh, more mtbs can facilitate clinical trial improvement and off-label treatments through an online database uh, uh, consultations they uh, have to be very helpful in most selecting the most appropriate biological samples in current clinical uh, practice your liquid biopsies is uh, used for the identification of your uh, drive and mutations and uh, circular uh, CT DNA with the first clinical uh, applications in your lung cancers they have used just now your compliance to international guidelines this is very 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 important you have the several uh, international gui guidelines uh, given by your ncc and uh, Na national comprehensive cancer network guideline recommendations only if they recommend only any biomarker or your companion uh, diagnostic test they can be taken and adherence uh, to nccn was uh, observed when they have studied when there is a there's a very recent report from uh, cell on 2022 and they have taken how this mtb is uh, molecular tumor boards are functioning are they really adhering to the nccl and the guidelines yes 98 percent assessed in the only are uh, only 80 percent evaluated by special single specialist received a um, the therapeutic indication by NCCN guidelines. So, only very few deviations, especially for uh, pa based on patient's age and comorbidities only. When the MTP hasn't indicated, molecular tumor board hasn't indicated only, there are deviations. Uh, for example, they have uh, uh, di uh, obesity or uh, diabetes comorbidities then maybe your regular clinical trials or cannot be these patients can't, they have to be excluded it is a very this particular group has found an adherence rate to 100 percent there is so was but clinical adherence to the treatment plan uh, recommended by the what happens uh, an mtb molecular tumor board recommends a treatment plan is the clinician can he adhere it but it may not be further very 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 complacent because the patient may not be for cooperative or maybe they could be more further diagnostics and investigations or medical conditions should be needed which tumor types uh, should be discussed in your molecular tumor report it should be all tumor types are eligible so many rare mal malignancies uh, mostly represent uh, in the majority of the molecular tumor boards uh, you have the breast brain gynecological lung and colorectal cancer these are all falling in the molecular tumor breast. and very very important uh, uh, mar uh, parameter is your next generation sequence it, it should be very much considered as an integrative part of your histological diagnostics for malignancies which lack your uh, standard therapeutic uh, options what molecular analysis could be performed what should you apart from NGS you need to have your uh, whole exome sequencing uh, transcriptome then you have your uh, uh, array comparative genomic hybridization, whole genomic sequencing, Sanger sequencing and mRNA sequencing. All this were uh, used, this particular tests were used for discussion in your molecular tumor boards. The most appropriate analysis with the aim of finding actionable alteration is target NCS uh, sequence uh, of the most important cancer associate. Ideally analysis for clinically relevant example gene fusions for your kinase fusions and uh, so this is like a molecular test recommended by your treating oncologist they will recommend and then cases referred to 
um, to the molecular tumor board by your treating oncologist or pathologist. Uh, so discussion of the case in your panels and then uh, one of the recommendations the tumor board means continuation of the ongoing existing therapy only or in case the tumor board feels because of the tumor pro mutational profile the patient may not uh, respond can you start a new therapy then uh, should it be um, do you need to have a new molecular diagnostic test and then enrollment in a clinical trial and then uh, all these particular recommendations have to be uh, entered in the uh, clinical uh, in your electronic medical records for access for treatmenting uh, oncologists. How do you should molecular finders, uh, findings be classified for drug selection? Yes, back to our old questions, what we have clearly seen before. Ba based, yes, uh, your mo molecular findings have to be classified for. How should you classify it? You either take your uh, um, blood tissue sample of histologically confirmed solid or uh, hematological and then go for sequencing and molecular uh, profiling through particles uh, through uh, several NGS platforms, Illumina platforms then put it in the board for different where your uh, different uh, uh, members from your other research palliative care and hospital ethics committee are present then give recommend a clinical uh, recommendations such as your current matched clinical trials or summary of molecular findings or matched therapies with clinical the benefit and then this is like how your there is an increase in the rise of your targeted therapy or you are more talking about precision therapy or precision targeted therapy there are uh, this is a different parameters of uh, classifying multi molecular uh, alterations based on the potential clinical utility you need to have very very good uh, progression free survival you should have important overall survival for the drug to be very successful in oncology in uh, precision oncology you are having very good array of drugs and you have identified a mark the companion diagnostic markers for these drugs and you are looking at how this endpoints when you are giving till this in the during the clinical trials for the patients now how do you how do you really uh, it, it, it may look very we have now uh, gone through the complete details of how the drug discovery process then we went about uh, uh, the different uh, a trials process what exactly are the master protocols then basket trials umbrella trials then we said that a single tumor type for basket trials and many tumor types and many market uh, market uh, markers for uh, uh, umbrella trials now now after seeing then we came how is it adapted in a hospital scenario by selecting use of your um, uh, molecular tumor boards your mtbs here how does it uh, is it all it all may seem but of course there is a lot of limitations when it comes to your yes many key hospitals many important institutes in india have all this molecular uh, tumor boards yes but is it uh, there is a lot of limitations it is uh, uh, prag pragmatic evidence based contest adapted tools so based on your molecular mark biomarkers so methods to detect uh, uh, they have been uh, you, uh, to detect uh, your mutational signals have been established in your research settings but of course they have been very well adapted in the clinical research also but uh, still a lot of challenges are coming in play for example for your analysis so you complete an, an NGS profiling and one the analysis so how do you make a complete uh, only if if an analysis is done by even a small lab technician also can you have a very good authenticated result yes tissue which is which is very 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 important specimens uh, for uh, clinical molecular testing uh, contain low tumor purity because of uh, the proportion of neoplastic uh, neoplastic cell uh, nuclei towards all cell nuclei because the proposition is very large so it may not you may not be the uh, during a biopsy you may not be excising only the tumor chair tissue sometimes even the normal tissue comes then how do you uh, does this impact yes then your low tumor purity it impacts the ability to detect somatic sequence alterations near the limit of your detection 
and severely limits the uh, ability to detect your copy number changes in a panel of sequencing assays. So, in tissue cell specimens with these limitations, you are uh, having a, uh, the accuracy in detecting depend. So, it is reduced. So, you have one more very important part is uh, here is uh, sequencing of age formalin based parafilm uh, FFP blocks. So, as the more the archiving goes more. So, you to extract the DNA and the RNA and then have a very good yield of that particular DNA RNA and so you are not able to uh, get a very good specimen sometimes. Then definitely if I want to check for the original mutations every time maybe after 2 years, 3 years, it is a real challenge. So, how do you maintain the uh, uh, so, and then and the limited availability of page sequencing of non-neoplastic samples to the filter germline variants. So, this is also pairing of samples every time, uh, suppose for a lung, I can't take a tumor of a bit of the lung and a normal, right? It's a very, very precious organ for the human being. You cannot really have a normal or a non-plastic uh, uh, neoplastic samples. That is when we use a database to filter your germline variants. But how can it be same from for all individuals? This is an additional very much uh, challenge in your clinical practice. Then you have your ethical challenges. How do you to maintain and improve the uh, trust of the patients, and then your uh, authenticity and uh, uh, of your study and then you have to look in, into uh, many clinicians, researchers and industrials and uh, academic uh, medical fields. This is all the, this is a very much a limitation in your uh, clinical uh, practice and definitely uh, a lot has uh, been explored in the last 25 years uh, after the human uh, genome project was, uh, uh, is over. A lot in precision oncology uh, has uh, happened and uh, definitely the many, many studies are on the way, many clinical trials are on the way to improve the clinical outcomes for patients uh, suffering with many different rare cancers as well and also to give uh, uh, treatments which are only specific for that particular uh, cancer group. Thank you.